so glad you could join us as we worship the Lord. Good morning. God bless you and thank you so much, Green Party. God bless you. You are great. And today we want to continue thanking God and praising God for uh, this brand new day that he's given us. I have a, a few announcements just before I go into uh, the message this morning. Just want to remind everyone about communion. Um, which is August the 2nd, and you can start picking up your communion packets on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 10 a.m. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So just remember that, and um, if you have to make special arrangements, we can make arrangements with you too. Praise God. Let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we bless you and we thank you for this morning. We thank you, O oh God, for how you have allowed us now to come again to worship you and praise you and bless your holy name. And we pray now, Lord, that you would cover us with your blood this morning. Strengthen us on the inside this day, I pray. I pray for your anointing, your spirit, your angels to come and help me to minister this morning. I come against the wiles of the enemy, O oh God, the tricks of the enemy. I come against every plot, every plan that the devil has purposed against any of us this day, O oh Lord. 
I render him powerless now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to spring forth into action. We want to be everything you want us to be today. So now, Lord, direct those things that I will say as now, Lord, I come to glorify your name. I give you all of the praise and I pray special prayers this morning for those that are uh, that have been affected or infected by COVID. I pray your hands of healing upon them. I pray of Jesus and bring forth the miracles, the blessings, the strength, the healing that everyone needs right now as we fight against this virus, this pandemic that has surfaced in our country and around the world. We praise you, we bless you, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'm just going to give us a, a uh, uh, well, you can call it station break. This is for, for those that do not wear your mask. I don't have on mine because I've got six feet or more away from this microphone. But um, it's important that you not only protect yourself, but you're protecting someone else. So please, please, please wear your mask, practice social distancing when you're out um, in the community, and um, let's keep each other safe, all right? And I say that from the bottom of my heart, I know it's important, but we wanna live a long and healthy life. Praise the Lord. Uh, to this morning, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a word with you. Uh, strength in spite of the circumstances is the word. But um, I also want to just make a special uh, uh, thanks and praise to Honorable John Lewis, uh, who passed away on yesterday, uh, for the work that God put in him. He's one of the greatest civil rights workers in our time. He was a young man who heard the call and refuse to sit still and let the injustices of this nation go silent. And I, I honor John um, Lewis, Honorable John Lewis today. And I, I thought about a, a song, I kept playing this song last night actually, uh, by Brian Courtney Wilson. I'm gonna read the lyrics, a few of the lyrics. Um, it's called A Great Work. And it says, sometimes there are obstacles in the road that can leave you feeling low and you don't know how to move forward. Sometimes there are turns you want to take, but the way gets hard to trace. Now you're wondering how did you get here, but don't give up until you see how God is ordering your steps so you can walk into your season. He that has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform it. God is faithful to perform it. And it goes on and on. And I can say this is what really uh, uh, sums up the life of uh, Honorable uh, John Lewis, that the Lord began in him a great work. I was inspired just to hear how early it was when he started at 23 years old. Um, maybe a little before that time, but his work in, in organizing started at age 23. So I thank God so much for the Honorable John Lewis, and if we can just uh, say a bow our heads for a uh, moment of uh, prayer for him and for, for his family right now and for the nation that mourns his death. Amen. And they said that he was the voice of conscience, conscience um, in the uh, House of Representatives in Washington. So we praise God for the Honorable John Lewis. He who has begun a great work in you is faithful to perform it. This is what we must look at closely, church. Now, am I doing the work that God has called me to do? Am I satisfied at the end of the day with the progress I am making in this life? Because he who has begun a work, a great work in you, is faithful to perform it. 
Am I doing the work that God has called me to do? Am I satisfied at the end of the day with the progress I am making in this life? So call this day my day. The day that I will gain faith to believe. a difference in this world and if I could talk right now to the young people to the youth especially God has a purpose for your life and it's important that you discover your purpose early not late in life if you discover it late praise God but I believe it's important that you discover your purpose early in life and that you discover those things that God has put in you. He did it for uh, our, our brother John Lewis early in life. And I just want to encourage you. Um, keep it in your mind of uh, things that you know you can do. Put your heart to it. But discover that purpose for whatever it may be. It may not be on the grand scale of things. It may be something small in the community. It may start out with volunteering and helping somebody else. But remember, you have a purpose to serve and to live out on this earth. So God can work that purpose inside of you. Amen. So um, we talked in Bible study this week about passive waiting and active waiting. And I, I want to thank Pastor Stubbs for such a, a beautiful teaching. In Lamentations, the third chapter, 25th to 26 verse, New King James, it says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him. Active waiting involves seeking God, reading the word of God hoping and expecting God to move. So we are actively waiting, passively. If you're waiting passively, that means that you're just sitting still and really not actively doing anything. But active waiting is where we want to zero our focus today. It involves seeking God, reading the Word of God, hoping and expecting God to move. How many of you are hoping and expecting God to move? I came with expectations this morning, expecting that God would move today in this service. So I believe in God and I'm thanking God for the move of His Spirit in this service. And with the act of waiting, it's correlated with something that I had started writing or working on earlier in the week. Live your your life with purpose. It's important that you live your life with purpose. Um, I'm going to read from the uh, King James, the New King James, uh, Psalms 57, 1 through uh, 3. And it says, Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for my soul trusts in you, and in the shadow of your wings I will make my refuge until these calamities have passed. I will cry out to my God, most high, to God who performs all things for me, who establishes his purpose for me. He shall sin from heaven and save me. He reproaches the one who would swallow me up. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. He will perform and he performs all things, but he will perform his purpose in your life. I want to, to put the active waiting of my life in gear. And I want everybody to think about this. I want to put my active life, my, my active waiting of my life in gear, in full swing. As I seek the face of God, as I read the word of God, hoping and expecting God to move. Amen. Active waiting. In the book of Philippians chapter 1, it, it starts out with, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Philippi is, is where Paul's first church is established. And I want you to just grab how Paul feels about his first work or this first church that he's established. He says this in the third verse. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. You'll see how his heart is really involved with what he's saying to the church. He says, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing that he who has begun, there it is again, a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart. This is the, 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 the deep word or, or the deep side of love that he has for the church that he planted at the very beginning. He says, in as much as both in my, in my chains and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers. much as both in my chains and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long, how greatly I long for all of you with affection of Jesus. And that word affection is one of the strongest words in the Greek word. It's one of the strongest to express compassionate love, a love that one that involves one's entire being. Now that's what we call um, the deep side of love, the, the love that goes deep. Um, and we thank God so much for that. I wrote this this morning. I'm going to station break and say what what I wrote this morning, early this morning. Love is strong because. It has roots that go deep. Is your love so strong that it has roots that go deep? Let there be some depth to your relationship. And this is what Paul was saying to the church and communicating to the church. Let there be some depth to your relationship. Work for it. Strive for it. Hope for it. And desire, O oh, long for strong love. The Psalms of Solomon, in uh, Psalms of Solomon 8 chapter, it says, Many waters cannot quench love, nor can floods drown it. So this is that love that, that Paul had for the church. It was that deep love and affection that he had. The strongest uh, word in, in the Greek that expressed his love for the people. And it's important when we're talking about loving what you're doing, your heart has to be in it. You can't just say, I want to do something and you can do it, but you do it just to say, I did it. But when you give of yourself, make sure your heart is involved in everything that you do. Loving people and let that love go deep. Let it have roots in it. Amen. So nothing can tear you apart from, the, from those that you say you love a whole lot. In the 12th verse, as Paul is encouraging the people to live out their lives, he says this in the 12th verse. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. He lets us know that although I am bound by these physical chains, I am also bound to Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, having become confident by my chains, I'm now much more bold to speak the word without fear. And if you can imagine, Paul is bound by chains, but it's encouraging the other brethren that although he's bound by chains and they, they see his strength, they don't see him asking for sympathy and, and crying and complaining, but they see some 
strengthen Paul that although he's bound by chains, he continues to what? Further or preach the gospel. And it encouraged those that, that, that are looking at him going through this tough time in his life. And I hope that you can be encouraged. Even now, we're going through some tough times. But that's not a time for you to give up. But that's a time for you to be encouraged. Amen. So you see how he encourages those that are dealing with what he's going through, but they get encouraged. Amen. They get encouraged and they are bold to speak the word without fear. Their confidence gave them courage and their courage persevered or preserved them for the power. All right. To overcome that power of fear. Their confidence gave them courage and their courage preserved them from the power of fear or to overcome the fear. Praise God. So Paul is in this Roman jail for doing the will of God. And he did not let anything hinder him. And I want you to think about he's in jail not letting anything hinder him. You're not in jail. But what happens is we let circumstances interfere with what God wants us to do. And the strength that Paul exhibits and shows is what we all need when we're going through tough times. Strength in spite of my physical handicaps. In, in spite of the, the, the things I haven't been able to uh, accomplish, I still muster up the strength to move forward. And in Paul's case, to preach the gospel, to do the will of God. This is what we all need. His purpose was greater or more important than his circumstances. And churches is important. That we have to realize that our purpose, and that's why we have to live uh, live out the purpose why God is called or whatever God has put inside of us. And that purpose has to be greater than your woes or the downs or things that are not going right. Your purpose has always and, and must always be greater than your circumstance. Because if you let your circumstance overwhelm you, they will eat you up, they will keep you down, they will bog you down, you go into depression, all because you have what? Been consumed by your circumstances. So your strength has to prevail, church. Paul, as I said, wasn't looking for sympathy. He kept fighting, he kept moving, he kept prevailing. Why? He who has begun a great work inside of him, inside of each and every one of us, God is faithful to perform it. That's why we hang on and we continue to give our best. Will you let circumstances dictate to you what you can't do or should do? Will you let a lack of money or resources interfere with your progress. I might have said this before, but when I came from Gainesville back to, uh, from, from Sarasota back to Gainesville, I didn't have any money. I didn't let not having money or resources stop me from doing the will of God. And none of us, when we say we, we have been called or there's something God is expecting, we should not let a situation or a circumstance hinder what God has put inside of us. I march right up to Gainesville to do the will of God. Amen. God provided in the latter end and made a way with the job and all that. But I didn't look at, okay, Lord, I don't have a job. How am I going to do the will of God? I didn't do that. I continue to do what God had put inside of me. And today, God has made the difference. Paul's circumstances did not stop the gospel. Why? Because his conversion was sure. And this is where you have to understand and know. You've got to know that your conversion and that relationship that you have with Jesus Christ is a sure thing. It's solid. 
Amen. Paul knew that his conversion was sure. He had some conviction and a desire to do God's will. There was a study that was uh, conducted. Amen. There was a study that was conducted. Um, and and it's, it kind of like uh, correlates with what I'm talking with you this morning. Uh, strengthen your circumstances. But this is why you need to make sure you stick with those things that uh, God has put in your heart. Things that you've been called to do. And this study was conducted, you know, right around like New Year's Eve. I got it from the, from the internet. And 100% um, 100, 100 of the people um, uh, are, are uh, taken into account for this particular study. 92% of those that made New Year's resolution out of that 100, 92% of the people gave up their dreams. They gave up. They went so far, and after a while, they gave them up. Only 8% of them achieve their dreams. So at the end of the year, there was only 8% that achieved the, their dreams. So you think about it. Some of you have made New Year's resolutions or you made them. Have you already uh, fulfilled them? Are you still working on them? Have you tossed them out the window uh, and said, I'll try it again next year? Where are you in your New Year's resolutions or the things that you set out to do at the beginning of the year? So only 8% of them achieve them. And I have seven things why they and how they achieve their the dreams, that 8%. What did the 8% do? They began with the end in mind. All right? So if we're going to persevere through circumstances or situations, we have to begin with the end in mind. Number two, they build a support system around them, mentors, coaches, advisors, and you think about this. God has called you to do something, or, or God has called you to uh, perform something, and to think that you can do it alone is a mission impossible. You need people. You need a support system around you to keep you encouraged, to keep you going. So that's what they did. They did. They built a support system around them. Three, they set specific and challenging goals. They set specific and challenging goals. Not just something off the top of their head, but they were very specific in the goals that they set. All right? Four, they recognize when they are procrastinating. Do you recognize when you are pro procrastinating? When you keep putting things off, all right, for tomorrow? Could get it, done, get it done today, and you keep putting it off. Well, they recognized when they were procrastinating. That's why they were able to achieve. Five, they practiced the 52-17 rule. This is the, the, the first time I heard the 52-17 the rule. 52 minutes of work, 17 minutes of rest. Working smarter with frequent, with frequent breaks. They practiced the 52-17 rule. 52 minutes of work, and I'll have to look into that some more. 17 minutes of working, of, of rest. Working smarter with frequent breaks. This is how they were able to achieve their goals. Number six, they listened to music for focus. They listened to music for for focus, and that was wonderful just to hear that. Because when I was working and performing, they listened to music for focus. And seven, they don't multitask. They don't multitask. In other words, you may be a jack of all trades and master none. Don't try to multitask, stick to that one goal, focus on that one goal. And I know you may want to do a whole lot of things, but settle down and focus on that one goal. That's how they were able to achieve the 8%. They were able to achieve the things that they promised or the New Year's resolutions or the things they set out to do at the beginning of the year. And so church, that's just one of the examples 
But this morning, I want you to encourage yourselves. I want you to be encouraged. That's what Paul was encouraging the church at Philippi. And he was encouraging them not to look at his situation and the chains that he was bound by physically, but to look at the things that God had already invested in them. And that's why, do you believe that you can accomplish that purpose? And I don't care how old you might be, you have a purpose why you live on this, why you are living on this earth to do something, not only for yourself, but to help someone else. And I pray that you will take that into account. And I pray that God will encourage you. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your life and you continue to let circumstances and situations overwhelm you and beat you down, I, I want to uh, extend to you an invitation to accept the Lord Jesus in your life today. And all I need you to do is just repeat after me. Bow your heads. Lord, I need you in my life. I need your salvation. The circumstances and the situations have overwhelmed me. But Lord, I want to get stronger. And Lord, I pray that you would come into my life. I pray that you will forgive me of all my sins in all of my errors all of my wrongdoings forgive me lord i pray lord that you would change my heart and change my ways in jesus name lord i need you to fill me with your holy spirit today fill me with your spirit god that will lead me guide me and instruct me along the way father I thank you for the Holy Spirit and I thank you for saving me. I thank you, Lord, for those that said that, said that prayer. And I pray now, Lord, that you'll continue to move by your Spirit, that we won't let circumstances and situations get the best of us, that we will find strength no matter what we are up against, no matter what we go through, that we will find strength in our situation, in our circumstances, that we will persevere. I pray, God, that you would move inside of us. I pray, Lord, that although the pandemic and so many things are, are, are coming at us in so many different ways, I pray, Lord, that you give us strength to survive in the name of Jesus. Bind the hands of the devil. Come against the wicked one. It doesn't want us to believe the truth that in you, Lord, that we have life and we have that life more abundantly. I pray now, God, that you'll continue to be our strength and that you'll continue to have your way in our lives. Father, I give you all of the glory. I give you all of the honor and I give you all of the praise in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. He who has begun a great work in you, he is faithful to perform it. So don't give up. Don't lose hope. Don't count yourself out in the middle of the game. You persevere. You fight through every obstacle. I know that you can win. I'm a living witness that God can take you through whatever comes up in your life. And he can get you through it. Praise God. Amen. And if you're listening today, you'd like to give your offering your type, you can go to our website, www.abidingfaithcc.org, and you can push the, the, the giving button, and you can give your type of your offering. We welcome your gifts, and we welcome your offering. And um, let me say this. Um, God blesses us um, and has blessed this church. And uh, we've been able to accomplish a lot and we thank him for it. And we know it's not all about funds and money. Money does work all things, the Bible says. But the most important thing that you want to have going for you is the word of God. You want to have the relationship, uh, Christ living inside of you. 
So I encourage you to make sure you establish a relationship with Christ. Live living inside of you from this day forward. Amen. God bless you and uh, have a wonderful day. Amen.